Y'all know what time it is. Black bandana. Two black MMA journalists. It's time for Black Market Picks. Yeah. I'm your host, Master Black Negro Jitsu, Lara Stefan. I'm joined by my co host. Neither of us are going to be seen in this one. Divine Prodigy. Divine Prodigy, say what's up. What? You're not going to be seen either? I feel no. special. No, no, I'm not going to be seen in this one. But we're here <laughs> to uh, break down all the top plays for UFC Fight Night 121 Australia. Verdum, Boomerang Verdum versus Marcin Tybora. And uh, at this point, Fabricio Verdum is still fighting. Him throwing a boomerang in Kobe Covington's face will not affect his uh, standing on this card. At least at this time, it doesn't look like it will. But, um, yeah, uh, we got a very interesting card ahead of us. I would not think that you should play this one with too much volume. There are not many, too many great sticking points here. You just want to gonna try and get one perfect and then call it a day. What do you think of this card, Javaz? This is a, this is uh, a crap pile here for me. I think from a, from a, a DraftKings standpoint, it's pretty tough. I think it's pretty tough to make lineups, especially with some of the guys I'm high on, like Eric Shelton being 9,200. I can't get with that. It's pretty tough. Can't either, brother. Um, but anyway, our price and tiers today are 9.5 to 8.8, 8.7 to 7.8, and 7.7 and below. Let's get right into this. I'm going to start my timer now. And we're going to start off with the top price range, which is 9.5 to 8.8K. My top overall play in the top price range is Alexander Volkanovsky or Shane Young. Um, he should smash in this spot. Young shouldn't be able to stop his takedowns. And Volkanovsky should uh, dominate with his wrestling, probably to a finish inside the distance. That's my number one overall play. My number two overall play is going to be... <clears throat> Ryan Benoit at $8,900. I think that he's like one of the mo my most confident plays on the night. He is, um, I, I don't see how he loses against uh, Mokhtarian. Mokhtarian is all kinds of horrible. And so I really like Benoit in this spot. And then my number three overall play in this price range is going to be the Dirty Bird to means, um, Apparently, he had a foot injury in his last fight against Charles Oliveira. That's why in their first fight, he was stuffing takedowns. In the second fight, he got wrestle mauled. I think that he's much better technical striker. The only way Muhammad wins this is with his wrestling. And uh, I think Means is able to stuff takedowns now that he's fully healthy. Travis, what are your top three plays in this top tier price range? Uh, number three, I have Tai Tuivasa. Um He's uh, 8,800. He's on a heavyweight fight against Rashad Coulter. He's also the protege and main sparring partner of Mark Hunt, which I'm guessing is why he's on this um, Australia card. Now, this is a heavyweight fight, so it could go either way, but um, Toy Vasa has great, has some really good boxing, actually. And um, I think in this fight against Rashad Coulter, who we've just seen uh, face Chase Sherman, he's a tough guy, but in a sense, this is going to be two guys just standing up. Now, it could get ugly after the first round, but um, we can have pretty much good faith. that, in, And in terms of heavyweight fight, you know, anything can happen. But I think Tui Vasa can get it done with his hands against Rashad Coulter. Um, number two, I'm going to have to go with Eric Shelton, though I do not like his price at all. Janelle Lausa is just bad. And Eric Shelton had two um, tough matchups to start off with. So I think it's like the UFC is giving him like a... a, a uh, a curveball hit? Well, not a curveball, but like an oh, easy pitch to hit. What's an easy pitch to hit? I don't know. Let's just a say a curveball. Ball. A soft ball. Yeah, yeah, a soft ball. They just throw him a soft one, you know? Throw him a soft one like that. But I think this is a, a smash spot for him. He should definitely <laughs> style on Janelle Lausa. The only thing is, will he pay off that price? Because 9200 I cannot get with. I really can't. And number one is Alexander Volkanovsky. He should definitely dominate Shane Young here. Um, Shane Young is decent, but this would be way too much for him, and it's on short notice. Um, Volkanovski was just on Twitter saying how he wants a $50,000 KO bonus, which I guess could give more incentive to um, roster him just a little bit. Doesn't mean he's going to get it, but then he wants Jeremy Stevens next. But I don't like when people overlook their opponents, but I'm guessing maybe he realizes that he's a superior matchup in this case as well. So Alexander Volkanovski is number one. 
Okay, in our middle price range, we've got 8.7 to 7.8. My number, and I hate this price range right here. It's just nothing. Me too, man. Trust. You chose it. Um, <laughs> my number one overall play in this price range is going to be one Jake Matthews at $8,500. Hmm. I think that uh, he's uh, he's a better wrestler here, which is very important. He usually struggles when he can't get his wrestling going. He's uh, got good striking, probably the more active striker, more active fighter overall. <sighs> I think he should win this fight against Felicikovic, who is kind of underwhelming at times. Not a bad fighter at all, just underwhelming. But uh, I, I, I find myself, of, if I like anybody, it's Jake Matthews. That's the person I feel like will definitely win. My number two overall play in this price range is going to be one, Frank Camacho at $8,400. I think that he is a... Uh, the fight between him and Damian Brown is is very valuable. Um, Camacho, I think if he doesn't finish early, he probably doesn't score very, very well because he usually only has a, about a round of gas. But within that first round, he's uh, he's uh, he's all liquid courage there, man. So I uh, I like Frank Camacho. My number three overall play is going to be Alex Chambers at $7,900. Nadia Kassim has never beaten anybody with a win. She is very overrated in this spot. She's never even had a real fight. Alex Chambers is super tough. She's got a good ground game. She's been training at ATT Coconut Creek. She's older now, but grappling is usually what really stifles um, women that don't have a lot of experience in MMA. You have to remember that women don't have wrestling programs and whatnot. So with Alex Chambers having the big, should have the big grappling advantage here, uh, I think she crushes it and uh, ends up being a very underplayed uh, value play. Travis, go ahead. Um, number three, I'm going to have to have Adam, I don't even know his last name, with, with Zorchak. I don't really know. But I honestly don't think he's going to win. I get the strangest feeling that Anthony Hamilton's going to win, and it kills me. But I guess for the chance that Adam touches Anthony Hamilton's chin, which we've already seen Marcel Fortuna, who's on a two-fight losing streak, touch, you have to at least throw a dart one up there. At 8700 though, for a guy I don't think is going to win, it's pretty pretty hard to pay that price. But if he does, of course, he could pay off handsomely. Um, but I don't trust this matchup at all. At all, at all, at all. At number two, I have Frank Camacho. I know he's he moved down to his natural weight class, which is going to be uh, 155 for this, facing um beat down Brown. Um, if Frank can, well, which might help his cardio. I, I don't, I don't know, but I know at his last his last fight against Lee Jiang Leong, he he got tired basically after the first round. But I'm guessing this might help. I don't know, but um, if he does, he has great power, and if he and if he lands, if he lands on beat down Brown, who was just knocked out in his last fight. But if he lands, it could pay off great for us. But I don't know. I can't trust it, especially after seeing his last fight. I have to see some major improvements. And number one, I'm going to have to go with Nadia Kassim. I know you put on the – you touted Alex Chambers. But Alex Chambers, to me, is a human punching bag. She's down near 40. She's coming off a two-year layoff. She was getting dominated by Kaylin Corinne before she got Kaylin the arm Corinne's bar. not a bad fighter, man. She's not, but she uh, her, her, her UFC record don't show anything otherwise. Well, she had one in no six. Ah, oh, Jesus! All right, one in six. One in six. I get even against Paige Van Zandt, who is a terrible fighter. She's overhyped. But um, yeah, I think Nadia Kasim could, even though she doesn't have a win against anybody with a credible record at all. Nadia Kasim, I think the UFC brought her in to smash, and who gets smash? Alex Chambers. I hope you guys Seems easy, it. but then again, I will say the ATT is freaking the death of me right now. Fucking Andre Olaski changes camps. You should have told me that. I wouldn't okay. have been on freaking. We, uh, we got two minutes thirty seconds left, buddy. Uh, well, go ahead. Price Danny. range seven point seven and below. Um, I'm going to go with Anthony Hamilton as uh, my. No, I'm not. <laughs> Rashad, don't Kutu you say is, that. Is my number one <laughs> overall play. Um. I think that he, him versus Tui Voss is an excellent fight. If Tui Voss has conditioning pro, uh, problems, and uh, I think Kotu is super tough and has he's got a pro boxing background. And if he wouldn't have got hurt in that Chase Sherman fight, he went to his knee. I think he would have won, no doubt about it. So I like Kotu. I think he's very underrated in this spot. He has UFC experience. We know he's he's got conditioning. He's got heart, and we don't know what Tui Voss has outside of being. My number two overall play 
in this price range is going to be one Nick Lentz. I believe in the curse of Will Brooks. What? Um, yes, they, they're both training partners uh, from American Top Team, former training partners. I heard Nick Lentz is the better grappler by a long shot. So I'm riding the Nick Lynch train this weekend. I'm not gonna have all of Don't play Nick Lynch, but I Don't will have Nick. a good bit. He should be severely under own. You're my number Do three play overall Nick. play in this price range is going to be Anthony Hamilton. Uh, I don't think Adam W is very good. I don't think he's proven anything, and so I really do think that um, he can get. I, I I I like Hamilton to win this. I'm picking him to win. So um, I'm all over Anthony Hamilton. I won't have 100, percent but I will have healthy exposure, and I have healthy exposure to his opponent as well. But I like Hamilton better. Go ahead. Oh yeah, take all the time. Number oh three, shit, we Anthony got 46, 45. Number three, Anthony Hamilton. I like I said, I think he wins. I get the strangest feeling he wins, and if he does, it's going to be from the wrestling, which can rack up points. I hate it, but I love it at the same time. Anthony Hamilton, you make me sick. Um, number two, I'm going to have to go with Bojan Velikovic. Um, I think he's going to um, outlast Jake Matthews in this spot. He just lost to Andrew Holbrook. No offense to Andrew Holbrook, but Andrew Holbrook is not good. Velikovic can stand. He can wrestle. He's pretty much all around fighter. And I think 19, Jake Matthews 18. Is decline. Decline though he's coming up to 170, so I, I'll give uh, the advantage there. And number one is going to be Bilal Muhammad. I think he beats the hell out of Means. I honestly, does Means is inconsistent. Bilal Muhammad Eight, has the striking, has the seven, wrestling, six, and I think that Bilal Muhammad is going to be a smash spot. Three, baby. smash two. Spot. That's it. All right, great. Barely made it. There's my alarm baby. going off in the background. Um, hope you guys enjoy black market picks. We. This card is very underwhelming, but we seem to talk the longest on it. So, so we barely. Well, behind it, baby. I'm telling you. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we shall see. We'll see what he does. But um, that does it for Black Market Picks. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want the full breakdown, go check out the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week.